Hello there, my beautiful internet friends. Welcome back to my channel here on Trauma Talk. Thank you so much for joining me here today. I wanted to go ahead and continue this series on relationships after trauma. And I do want to say before we dive in two things, my neighbor has a little white dog. It's fluffy and it barks all the time when it's outside and there's nothing that I can do about this. And this is the only window I have to film. So if you hear some yapping in the background, that's what's going on. And secondly, if you like videos that talk about mental health and life in the aftermath of trauma, feel free to give this video a thumbs up or subscribe. Today I wanted to talk about one overwhelming feeling that I dealt with for the majority of, oh, I don't know, the first five years of being in a relationship, and that's this feeling of guilt, of uh, apology for who I am, for who I was, feeling so bad that my poor, poor boyfriend, now husband, had to choose me to be with because I had so many issues, so much baggage. Like how could he ever really want that? He's probably just sticking around for, I don't know, maybe pity. I felt so guilty for who I was, for the issues that I had. And I think there was a part of me that almost pitied him out of self-hatred. I would often try to give him a way out of the relationship, like make excuses for him to be able to go if that's what he really wanted, because I assume that's probably what he really wanted. And it caused a, a lot of internal turmoil and I think tension in our relationship that didn't have to be there. However, I think it's a really, really common feeling to have. I can't tell you how many times I've joked back and forth with some of my best friends who also experienced relational trauma earlier in their lives uh, about feeling so sorry for our poor husbands or our poor boyfriends who have to deal with us and all of our junk. And it's said as a joke, but at the core of it, I think there's this deep insecurity and this deep hurt, at least for me, that I am not fit, I am not deserving to be in a relationship because I'm not like normal people. Um, I'm not like the other girls, but, but not in the context that people usually say that in. Like, I felt permanently broken and different and like they, like Brian really shouldn't want to be with me. And I wasn't sure why he was. There's so much shame and often self-hatred or insecurities that come with surviving trauma, specifically when you're talking about relational trauma or abuse. And this manifested for me very heavily in just feeling like I needed to apologize for my existence to the person who chose to be with me. After a lot of time and work and communication, I no longer feel that way the vast majority of the time, but it took me a while to come to a few realizations and then a lot longer for those realizations to set in. I think I kind of thought of myself as this special extra extra broken snowflake that no one should ever want to be around or think about or touch or talk to or communicate with because I wasn't okay, because I was dealing with some heavy things, because I had baggage. I definitely had what people call baggage coming into a relationship. And I think I sort of thought that that was unique just to me. Here's the thing though, anyone coming into a relationship, I would say past the age of, you know, 12, dating onward, has issues, has experiences that play into how we function in a relationship. My husband, Brian, had prior bad experiences with relationships, things that really hurt him. And I looked at those things and I had no problem accepting them. Like it took communication to work through and sometimes it still does because our issues will bash up against each other from time to time. But I wanted to be there. Like I wanted to hear what he had gone through. I wanted to be there for his pain and for his joy and his struggle. I wanted to hear his story, like from the deepest, most honest part of my heart. But I couldn't accept that he'd feel the same way because I felt like my issues were darker or bigger. And maybe in some moments they were, and maybe in some moments they weren't. But I couldn't fully see that we both brought things into this relationship that we both had a history that wasn't super, super pretty, and that we both had issues that played into how we communicated and the challenges that we faced. No matter who you're dating, they've got stuff that's gonna play into how they interact with you, whether it's family issues or past relationships or bad or good experiences. And that's just life, that's just people. None of us come into relationships with a, a clean relational slate, again, past the age of like, I don't know, 12. Here's the other thing, when he would confide in me, when he would tell me about those experiences and the things that had hurt and you know how his past relationships were and how that played into us, I was honored to listen. I was so grateful because it made me feel 
like I was trusted, it made me feel loved, it made me feel like I was someone worth talking to, and I knew that I could help, I knew that I could listen, and it was this great exchange, right? But then when we flipped the script, and when he wanted to be there for me, all I wanted to do was push him away because I felt like there was no way that he could actually want to listen to what I was saying. Anytime I would talk about my trauma or mental health or anything like that, it was with such an apologetic tone, either during or after, because he shouldn't, he shouldn't have to deal with this. He shouldn't have to be burdened with this. I should just figure it out and get over it on my own. But again, that's really not how relationships work. That's not, I don't think even how in you know a perfect world I'd even want them to work because there's so much connection built through being there for each other, through listening. Looking back over the course of our relationship, we faced some pretty, pretty, pretty challenging things together. Like, I mean, most recently in the last year and a half, I had my leg amputated um, that came with a lot of complications and we were able to get through it together in a really strong way. He had struggles during that time, I had struggles during that time, but we've learned to listen to each other through all of that. I think that there were a number of things that helped me let go of that guilt that I felt, let go of some of that insecurity and start slowly accepting that he really wanted to be there. The number one thing I can think of is probably repetition. If I, I can't even tell you how many times I asked him, do you really want to be listening to this? Like, we don't have to talk about this. I don't have to talk about this. Um, you don't have to be here. Like, there's not really like there's the door if you want to get out, but like, hey, if you want an escape from this conversation, you are welcome to go because I understand. I don't want to be talking about this stuff. I'm sick of hearing about it. And he would constantly reassure me that, no, Joe, I want to be here. I want to listen. Like, this is a part of who you are and I want to help however I can. And it took him saying that over and over and over and over again for me to finally be able to start hearing it. And at one point in our relationship, probably more than one point, I told him that that repetition was very helpful and very necessary and that I needed that reassurance. And it was hard to admit that I needed reassurance. It was hard to admit that I needed anything. But saying that out loud and saying, here's the need that I have I need to be told that it's okay not to be okay. Even if I know that in theory, hearing it from you really helps me. And that was really helpful for him to know because then he had a direction to go and then he had a game plan. Then he knew, okay, when this is happening, this is what she needs. And instead of feeling lost and helpless, he knew that that could be a helpful thing. So stating the needs that I had when I got to a place where I felt like I could put words to them was really helpful. And also picturing the roles reversed. I'm always someone who has really enjoyed listening to other people and I've tried to be a good listener. I still try to work on that skill. And it brings me joy when someone shares something with me. It, it's, I know I said honor before that that's really what it is. When someone shares something with me that matters to them, be it good or bad, if it's um, terrible things that they've gone through, something that they're struggling with, the best thing that ever happened to them, their hopes, their dreams, whatever it is, I am there for it. I'm so there for it. And most of us are. Most of us do want to listen. There's joy in that connection. It's, it's so rich. And I had to continually picture how I felt when Brian was having a hard time and I was listening to him, when he allowed me in to be able to help him, in the moments when that wasn't the case, in the moments when um, you know, we were struggling or he didn't want me to be there for him or he was having issues trusting me, whatever it was, and he wasn't in a place to let me help, it was painful because I was like, I just wanna be here for you. I'm just, like, I'm here, I wanna listen. I'm your partner, I wanna help. Recognizing that feeling in myself and recognizing that that came from a very sincere, deep place and realizing that he was telling me the same things over and over and over helped me to connect the dots. Like I said, it took a long time and I still, to this day, whenever something comes up, oh, I still have this twinge of guilt, this twinge of apology, and this overwhelming feeling that I shouldn't be talking about this, that he shouldn't have to be dealing with this. But instead of lasting for the whole day or the whole conversation, it usually just pops up for a moment and I'm able to sort of recenter and come back to those conversations we've had, come back to that reassurance. And if necessary, ask him, hey, do you really wanna be, do you really wanna be here? Do you really wanna be having this conversation? He can say yes, and then I feel okay and I'm able to continue. It's taken years to get there. It's hard work, but it's really good work. And I think 
in the process of building that trust where you start feeling comfortable with someone enough to let them hear your heart, let them hear your struggles, your hurts, what you're working through, so much relationship building happens right there. It's not gonna happen overnight. That can seem really frustrating, but again, I think there's so much value in the time that is invested in building that trust. There's absolutely no reason that you need to feel guilty or apologetic for being in a relationship with someone. Now, this comes with a caveat that uh, for a long time, I wasn't ready to be in a relationship. I wasn't at a place where that was a good idea for me. And so we all you know, need to judge for ourselves if that's a step that we're ready for, if that's a good idea for us. But when you are ready for that, if you do find yourself in a relationship, if you, if you choose that, please know that you don't have to feel that guilt, that if someone is telling you that they want to be there for you and they continue to tell you that and continue to show up, that it's okay to start trusting that, as scary as it is, because if they're saying it and they're showing it, chances are they really mean it. If you feel like you are totally unworthy to be in a relationship or if the relationship that you're in, um, you're, you're struggling with feeling guilty and apologetic for who you are and the trauma that you've had or the issues you've gone through, I hear you, I really get it, I have been there. It is really painful and it, it feels suffocating sometimes and like there's not a way out and like you just suck. But if I can, please allow me to reassure you that none of those things are true. What has happened to you does not at all define your worth. It doesn't even have an impact on it. We all have issues, we've all gone through things and what you've experienced is a part of your story. It's a part of who you are. Sometimes that's really hard to think about, but it doesn't for a single second exclude you from receiving love, exclude you from people wanting to be there and wanting to help. If you have trouble feeling that, receiving that, accepting that, again, I really understand. Um, I've been there many, many times for a very long time in my life, but it can and it absolutely does get better. It takes time and energy and work and some conversations filled with tears and maybe therapy, but it can absolutely get better. You are 100% from the bottom of my heart. Please hear me. You are 100% worthy of love and respect. There's nothing that's wrong with you. You may have gone through something. You may be struggling. You may feel like something's horribly broken with you like I have many times in my life, but you are not broken. And if you're in a relationship with someone else, the chances are that they have their own struggles as well. And you can help each other through those insecurities. You can help each other as you both figure out what this journey is gonna look like for you. People really do wanna be there. I did not believe for a very long time that anyone would ever want to truly be there for my trauma recovery, but they actually did. There are people out there who from a very sincere place want to go through this with you, want to listen to you. They are out there and if you don't have someone in your life like that right now, whether it's a friend or family member or a significant other, I promise you people like that do exist. Sometimes it can take a little while to find them. Not everyone is gonna be on board for that kind of a journey. Not everyone's prepared for it and that's okay. They're just not the right person. I assure you that there are amazing people out there who sincerely want to be there for you, not out of pity, but because they're there for that connection and they wanna help you because they love you and they care about you. Let me know what you think of this Relationships After Trauma series, if you would like to see it continue and what in particular you would like me to talk about. I really appreciate suggestions because they you know, bring up things in my head that I'm like, oh yeah, that'd be great to talk about. And I've taken many of your suggestions for these type, uh, types of videos. So I'd love to hear from you down below. I, I'd love to hear if you feel like sharing any part of your story or if you relate to this or if you don't. If you enjoy this conversation and videos like this, like I said at the beginning of this video, I would love to see you back here if you want to hit subscribe or like on this video. We talk about mental health and life in the aftermath of trauma. And if you feel like it, I'd love to see you back here. Thank you again for listening and spending a few minutes out of your day here with me today. You could be anywhere in the world doing anything and you chose to hang out with me and I really appreciate that. I love you guys. I'm thinking about you and I will see you in the next video. Bye guys.